pride. They weren't stubborn. They moved off him quicker, letting the marketplace see less of him. The Niners, because they have a brilliant offensive coach, made a lot of their evaluation at practice. And they realized very early he struggles with accuracy. Teams get into their ego. They don't want to be wrong. So they double down on it, trying to prove they're right. And yet the Niners, who have missed on plenty of picks, just said, hey, we see it. Doesn't work. Brock Purdy's better in practice. We're moving on. The seventh round guy is better than the first round guy we gave up picks for. Too many general managers in this league and coaches are trying to protect their genius, protect their picks. I mean, the New York Giants, the, even worse than that, they doubled down on Daniel Jones, which was a reach as a pick, and then they paid him a small fortune. That's, that's unforgivable. If you can't tell if your quarterback's a guy by Thanksgiving of the second year, get out of the league. Go sell cars. Do something else. You can't do it. It doesn't take that long to figure it out. It's about getting it right, not being right. Niners weren't stubborn, got more for less. Clarence Hill, that was fun. Spicy, feisty, love it. On a July 4th week, let's go to Alex Curry with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. Well, J. Mack, Lamar Jackson has established himself as a fantastic dual threat quarterback, putting up incredible numbers in both passing and rushing stats. And Cam Newton was another great dual threat quarterback when he was in the league, but he doesn't put himself at number one all time. He said he thinks Lamar is the best one in league history. And I think that's fair, right? Lamar is a, a two-time MVP. Cam has one MVP, but he also has a Super Bowl appearance. And as we were talking about yesterday, I think this is the one thing holding Lamar Jackson back from greatness is his postseason success. Yeah. We need to see him go deep in the postseason. We kind of broke this down yesterday, but when you look at Lamar's career numbers in the regular season compared to the postseason, there's a, a big difference. Obviously, a bigger sample size in the regular season, but two and four in the playoffs. And then with your touchdown interception, six and six, and then the passer rating taking a big drop from 98 in the regular season to 75.7 in the postseason. And on, on last year, it felt like it was finally his time to take down Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, who were having an off year. I think everybody bet on Lamar Jackson and the Ravens at home to beat the Chiefs, and it didn't happen. And it solidified the Chiefs' dynasty this year. So I, he just needs postseason success to kind of get over that that next hump. But he is. He is the most dynamic and impressive dual threat we've seen at quarterback. Yeah, I don't think there's any question, really. No. Like, who's even a close second? And it's not Cam. I mean, no. yeah, Cam was not. Cam was really, really good. But same deal with him. Postseason success is going to hinder him yeah. from getting in but the Hall of Fame. Get, he did get to a Super Bowl. And, and he I has mean, an MVP. Total disaster in the Super Bowl. Wouldn't fall on the fumble. Then afterward, wouldn't talk to the media. Like, you know, I know we bashed Dak Prescott and all these guys. Cam never had back-to-back -back winning seasons as a starting quarterback. It was just like he was hot and cold. Very good player, obviously. Amazing college player. But, like, I don't know. He, Lamar, best dual threat player. He's just got to win in the playoffs to – who, who's the best? It's the missing piece of his already, like, young but great career that he's had. Yeah, it's – I guess my question would be, is there a dual-threat quarterback who's technically won a Super Bowl, Steve Young? Like, I don't think Patrick Mahomes is a dual-threat. Uh, like, he, he has he, the threat run, of running. But he, he also, can like, run. he says he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. But he does when he needs to in the postseason, and that's why we see him do what needs to be done and get to a Super well, Bowl, and he'll do it in a Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. That's a smart thing. Like, yeah. I'll run when I need to. I don't want to be uh, run first. Like, Lamar sometimes yeah. can be run first. Definitely. And it's like, we know he can win from the pocket. He's a great passer. Um, yeah, that not, not surprisingly, a lukewarm take from Cam Newton. That's not even that hot of a take. I, you have fighting words for no, Cam Newton today. It's a today. lukewarm take. Sometimes I have, you know, <laughs> lukewarm takes. For but not fire. Yeah. For fire. Feist, you're feisty with Cam Newton today. All right, let's move on to the Bengals because their roster will look a little different next season. Burrow, Chase, and Higgins are all coming back, but they lost running back Joe Mixon and receiver Tyler Boyd. Now, they did bring in running back Zach Moss and tight end 
uh, Mike Kizeskis to fill some holes. And Burrow is looking forward to how this offense will run. He said that he thinks they'll be able to do a lot with their personnel groupings and putting guys in different spots. So I think the important thing is they still have their top two receivers in Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. But the key to the season is going to be a healthy Joe Burrow. Because even coming in to last year, when he got his big contract, he was dealing with the calf injury during training camp that he played with kind of through the start of the season. He tweaked it a little bit and had the setback, but then he had the the major wrist injury that ended his season. So Joe Burrow is the key to the Bengals' success. You had them in your top tier for Super Bowls, and 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 he's the only person that we have seen that's still in the league take down Patrick Mahomes in the postseason. Tom Brady was the other one. He's obviously out. But, yeah, it was Joe Burrow in the 2021 season AFC championship to get to the Super Bowl to take down Patrick Mahomes. And I just looked it up. So the year after they uh, lost the Super Bowl, because Clarence Hill was asking about it. Oh, what has Burrow done since then? Well, they went to the AFC championship game and lost in Kansas City. 23 to 20. Mm-hmm. So like, and that was not like a blowout by any stretch. And the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. So yeah. they then lost the Super Bowl to the eventual champs in yeah. 22, uh, 21, the Rams. Then they, the next year they lost to the eventual champs, the Chiefs. Yeah. And then Burrow was hurt and they missed the playoffs. So like, I don't see why the Bengals shouldn't be in there. No, like, it, it all comes down to a healthy Joe Burrow because he is that yeah. guy when he's healthy. But last year, even coming in from the get go, he was injured in training yeah. camp. So if you're starting the season injured for already grueling season, like it's as we saw, he got nicked again and then he had a major injury. Bengals fans don't like it, but Glass Joe is a decent moniker for for Joe. He's just got to stay healthy. You woke up and you chose fighting words today, Jay. He's always hurt. Come on. Well, not always, but not always. He's barely been in the league, and he, I think he's had a couple major injuries, the appendectomy. Like, I know that's not an injury, but it's, it just seems like it's always something. If he's healthy, guy's elite, and they're in the Super Bowl mix every year. Oh, man, J-Mac. What? Yeah, exactly. Healthy, but, like, show's fighting today. Love okay. it. All right, let's go to the NBA, where Buddy Hield is joining the Warriors following a sign-and-trade deal with the 76ers. He will reportedly sign a multi-year deal with two years, $21 million guaranteed. Heald has been one of the top three-point shooters in the last five seasons and will be tapped to fill the hole left by the departure of Clay Thompson. Now, he's a strong shooter. He's a 40% career three-point shooter, which plays into the Warriors' game. And he is the most three-pointers made in the last five seasons, just above Steph Curry. Oh, because Curry missed like a full season. And right? it's okay. Wow, that's no, a stat. That's, that's a that. great one. This is this is the Warriors game. And again, he's led the league in three-pointers the last five seasons. Well, Jason so, Tatum on that list. Look at that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Fourth not bad. Yeah, yeah. But some Warriors fans have already uh, <laughs> started calling him and Curry the Splash Buddies. Which, like, no, guys. It's good. Yeah, I, I guess for Buddy Heald. But, like, when you have such an iconic nickname for a team, you got to, like, completely rebrand. You can't go from Splash Brothers to Splash Buddies. Buddies? You don't buddies. like that? Buddies is fun. Um, So, basically, you lose Clay Thompson and yeah. you replace him with Buddy Heald and DeAnthony Melton. Yeah. Are those two guys combined better than what Clay was last year? And that's an interesting question. I, I mean, had a Warriors buddy trying to sell buddy um, trying to sell me like, listen, th- those two combined, plus Kyle Kyle Anderson, uh, who's okay. I know he can't shoot, but Chris Paul's always hurt. Like, is there a world where they really didn't lose that much? I know the name Chris Paul and the name Clay is like, oh, they lost huge. But if you look at the numbers, like Buddy Hill, I didn't realize that. Yeah, stat. that's he doesn't play any defense, but uh, he's a bit of a chucker. Remember. Wasn't it in the, against the Knicks? Is that it? No, that's not the highlight. But against the Knicks, they, like, dusted him off because Nurse wants guys who play D. He don't play a lot of D. So then he finally comes in late in the series and was like, holy Ooh. cow, where's this flamethrower bit? Yeah, this is the game. Yeah. Well, Buddy Hill just couldn't miss. I think he had, like, six threes. So he can fill it up. He doesn't play any D. And remember, when you're playing with other great players, like a Steph Curry, it's almost going to elevate your game. There's, like, the effect. You have, like, the Tom Brady effect, the Steph Curry effect, the LeBron effect. When players come in to greatness, you want to level up and be on their level. And as we're seeing here with the stat, I mean, him and Curry are one and two for most three-pointers made in the last five seasons. Could be be jacking. Yep. Alex Curry with the news. 
Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Lie News. All right. Yeah, I got called out by somebody close to Kevin Durant. Oh, boy, <laughs> you'll, you'll hear about that next. But also, did you see this Caitlin Clark number? Absolutely staggering. We'll talk about that next.